Hi everyone, this is Ashish. I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. This is the next part of Learn Python with Me series. And in this video, we will talk about a very important library, and this is called NumPy. NumPy is a short form for numerical Python library. Now this is a very important library to learn if you want to go into data science, if you want to analyze data, um, if you want to find patterns in data, if you want to write artificial intelligent models. So this is a must if you want to do any of these things. Now, what is a library? So let's go back to functions. So uh, in my functions video, we created lots of functions to add numbers or to multiply numbers. Now, you don't have to write all these functions on your own because someone has already done those for you. And what they have done, they have packaged this code in forms of libraries. So you can just import these libraries and use the functions that are already present in those libraries. So you don't have to write these functions again and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So libraries are really important and there are different kinds of libraries that are very specific to different kind of things. But NumPy is a must if you want to go into any kind of data science project or if you want to work with AI. Now, NumPy gives us something that is called an array. An array is a data structure and it is very much like the list, but they are 50 times faster than lists and you can do lots of things on arrays. So NumPy is a very special library. And if you want to install NumPy, what you can do, you can use pip install numpy if you're working with google collab but if you're using python on your local computer then you can just type python m pip install numpy and this will install numpy locally in your computer in order to use numpy library in your project you can use this import keyword and you can write the name of the library. So we will write import NumPy. And this will import all the functionality that is associated with NumPy into our project. Now what I'm doing here is I'm creating an array and I've called it my underscore array. And we are using this inbuilt function that is present inside the NumPy library. So I'll use NumPy dot array. I'm using dot because this is a function inside my NumPy library. So this will convert a list, that is this list of numbers from one to six, to a NumPy array. So let's execute this command. And we will see the type of my array. And you can see that it is numpy.nd array. Now, this nd array is a type of a data structure, and this is very specific to NumPy. So now you have created your first array. Now, there is another way of importing NumPy. You can import NumPy as NP, okay? So if you do this, what it will do, it will import NumPy as num NP keyword, and then instead of using NumPy, you can just use np.array. So you don't have to type NumPy all the time, you can just use NP. And I'm defining another array that is array underscore two. And you can just print this array now, once it's defined, you can see that it is stored in the memory. Now you can also pass a tuple in, inside this function, np.array, rather than a list, like we did in the previous example. You can pass a tuple of these numbers, and when you do that, it will convert that tuple into array. So you will find that array underscore three is this one that contains all these numbers. Now, there are different dim dimensions of an array. So you can have 1D arrays, 2D arrays, 3D arrays. You can have higher dimensional arrays as well. So in order to create a 1D array, I'm just using this np.array function. And you can see that when I print it, we have just created a 1D array. But you can also create a 2D array. 
okay which is like a matrix or like a table that has rows and columns so what i'm doing here i'm defining array underscore 2d and i'm just using the same function np.array and then i'm passing two lists inside of it so what it will do it will create a 2d array for me or a matrix and you can see that it has created this array that is a two-dimensional array so it has two rows and it has three columns right now we can also create 3d arrays and in this example i'm passing two lists that have lists inside of them so when we execute this command this will create a 3d array right and you can see that this is a 3d array so this can be the z-axis that has two of these and then you have these two rows in each of those Z axis elements and you have these two rows in the other Z axis element. Now you can use this ndim attribute to check the dimensions of an array. So I'm using it on array underscore 1D. So it will return a value one. So this is a 1D array. I can use it on the second array. It returns two. So it is a 2D array. I'm using it on three. So it, uh, it is returning a value three. That, that means that it is a 3D array. I can also create higher dimension, uh, dimensionality arrays by using this np.array function. So I'm just passing a list here and then I'm giving it another argument that is nd min. Now nd min will tell us how many dimensions this list should have at minimum all right so we are creating this 4d array when i print this and when i find its dimension it says that it is a 4d array now these are very difficult to visualize but these higher dimensionality arrays are really really important because you'll use lots and lots of them when you're training ai models so all these AI models will work on some higher dimensional array like a 4D array or a 5D array. So keep these in mind that you can create all these arrays with the numpy um, np.array function. All right. Now you can also access elements with index like you did with lists. So what I've done here is I'm just printing the value of array 1D. And when I put the index inside two square brackets, I can use this index of zero. And you will see that the first element is returned because lists and all kinds of arrays and all data structures in Python are zero index. That is the first element is at zero at position or index. It will return the first element when we pass the index as zero. When we pass the index as minus one, it will return the last element and that is four in this case. Now let's print uh, array underscore 2D and this is the whole structure of array underscore 2D. So now you can do is uh, you can just pass the number of rows and then columns and it will return the element there. So I've passed zero index for the row. So it will select the first row. This is, that is this one. And then I have selected the column number. So this is the zero, zero at column one and two. So it will select four for me, right? And it has returned four. Let's print the value of array underscore 3D. So you can see that it is an array that has two of these elements on the Z axis. And then each of them has two rows and three columns. All right. So if we select the index 000, that is zero at position on all these axes, it will return one. But if we select 101, what it will do, it will go to the first index first. So it will select this one that I've selected. All right. Then it will go to zeroth index. That is this row. All right. And then it will go to the first index. So that is one and two, this column. So it will return two. Let's see what it returns, right? So it does return two. So I hope that you learned these functions of NumPy library. And I will see you soon in another video and we'll talk about lots of other functions in the NumPy library so that you can get confident with 
arrays and then we can progress further to developing more complex AI architectures and neural networks. So I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot for watching.